Hey, this is Dr. Buck Parker, and in this video, I want to talk about epiglottitis. Now, you're probably wondering why a surgeon is talking about epiglottitis. Well, first of all, let me tell you what the heck epiglottitis is. So, the epiglottis is a little thumb-shaped little thing in the back of your throat that when you swallow, uh, it goes down and puts, um, basically blocks off the airway so you don't put things like food and water and stuff in your windpipe and it goes into your esophagus instead. Well, epiglottitis, itis means inflammation, and epiglottitis means that the epiglottis got inflamed or in this case infected and it swells up. And what happens when the epiglottis swells up really big is the airway can actually get shut off. And when the airway gets shut off, you can't get any oxygen into your lungs, you can't get it into your blood, and it doesn't go to your brain, and you can die pretty quick. So, um, this usually happens in kids around, um, I think it's two to five-ish, and um, it's normally seen with a uh, bacteria called um, Haemophilus influenza. And tip, it, I think it was in the maybe early 90s, there was a uh, vaccination developed for this. And so we don't see it that much <clears throat> excuse me, anymore, but we do see it every once in a while. And the reason I'm talking about epiglottitis um, is because last week uh, I was actually sitting right here uh, editing a video <clears throat> and I got called. And uh, they said, we need you in the, in the pediatric uh, emergency room uh, quick for an airway. Whenever anyone says, uh, we need you quick for an airway, that's bad news because they're calling a surgeon for an airway, which means they most likely need a cricothyroidotomy, which is when you, you know, if you've seen in the, in the movies, they uh, make an incision right here and they stick a, like a pen in someone's neck and they, you know, save them and breathe them. That doesn't really happen with a pen, but that's what the cricothyroidotomy is. Um, essentially, they can't breathe through their mouth, uh, they can't get air into their lungs, and so you have to make a hole here in their throat, in their um, windpipe, so that you can get air into them. Um, and it's, it's an emergent uh, situation, whereas in emergent, like, they're going to die in a, f in a few minutes if you, don't, uh, if you don't resolve the issue. So I went there, and of course, so they said pediatrics, and I went, oh, crap, because whatever you're doing with pediatrics, I mean, whatever you're doing with adults, pediatrics is just similar, but it's smaller. So, so if you have an airway problem, um, instead of a bigger airway to, to get to or a bigger um, kind of target, you have a smaller target. So uh, I said, oh, well, hey, this, this may be exciting. I walk in, and the kid is, uh, has epiglottitis. Uh, they tried to intubate him, which means they tried to put the tube um, you know, in his mouth and through the, into the windpipe. And they couldn't do it a couple times. And usually the anesthesiologist is there. They try to do that. We're not able to do that. And the, uh, they were uh, bagging him, which means they have a little mask there, and they're pushing the air in. And they were able to keep his uh, oxygen saturations, um, you know, 98 to 100 percent, which is fairly normal. We're pushing a lot of oxygen in. Uh, in uh, with that, it, usually you, you breathe about 20. Our room air is 21 percent oxygen. We, he was. They were pushing in 100 percent oxygen. So. Um, you know, we had a little time, and so I said, um, you know, they said, it's epiglottitis, we can't intubate him, we tried a couple times, he needs a cricothyroidotomy. So um, I said, okay, we'll bring him up to, so at th this point, like, um, I'm not sure if I crapped my pants then or later, but I did find a little bit of maybe soilage later in my pants, so I'm going to have to buy um, 10 pack next time. But anyway, uh, so I said, okay, let's bring him to the operating room because he was still saturating 100%. Uh, we took him up to the operating room. It was emergent. We didn't really have anything uh, set up. Usually with the operating room, you know, you have a whole host of um, instruments and, and everything, and it, it's all set up uh, pr prior to your operation. This, there was nothing in there. It was just the anesthesiologist, me, one helper. Um, they grabbed a tray real quick of uh, some instruments. And um, the kid was basically passed out at this point because he was his uh, oxygen saturations actually dropped, uh, started dropping low, you know, the 80s, 70s, 60s, like that. And then you know, the kid's gonna die like within a few minutes if I don't uh, get the airway. So 
uh, made an incision basically across here like that. Uh, dug, dug down with just some uh, clamps and forceps and things like that and a little um, retractors and got, his, uh, got visualization of the trachea actually. And that thing is like your pinky, it's so tiny. Um, and so I made an incision in the trachea and then you hear all the air blow out. You got, I could actually see it, thank God. Put the tube in um, and then we could breathe for him and uh, basically save the kid's life. So that was a really, really hairy situation. Uh, that is uh, not often seen with H, uh, uh, Haemophilus influenza with uh, epiglottitis, but it can be. Um, that's probably the worst case scenario with, uh, with um, epiglottitis. And um, yeah, like I've never had that happen before. That was the first time I ever traked a, a five-year-old kid. I've done lots of tracheostomies before. I've done a few emergent tracheostomies like that where, you know, you, you come in and you actually end up saving their life because uh, they, they're not able to breathe, but that was the first one of the five-year-old. That was really um, pretty scary. But um, I, I really wanted to make this video because I just felt very uh, thankful for all of my training, all the people who taught me um, anything along the way, all the, all the folks that I trained with, uh, Henry Ford. Um, and uh, yeah, I just was like, after that, I was just so thankful. I really didn't think... Um, you know, I actually wasn't really uh, like scared as in, you know, I'm sh I wasn't really shaking or, or feeling pressure. I was feeling pressure, but I wasn't scared that I was not going to do it. There wasn't, there, there was never a time in, in my brain where I said, uh, I can't, I can't do it or the kid's not going to live. I just said, you know, thought to myself, this is what I need to do. And I'm going to do that. And that's it. There wasn't any option. Um, and I think that was just because, um, you know, I, I got some good training and, um, and I've had f uh, fortunate mentors uh, or I've been fortunate to have the mentors that I had. So I just wanted to um, kind of still tell that story because it's a little bit of an exciting story. Um, it's, gr it's, you know, great um, to bring up the topic of, of uh, uh, epiglottitis for kids, uh, homophilus influenza and vaccinations, although I don't want to go into the vaccinations deal. Um, you know, you probably should get your kids vaccinated for this stuff. You want to keep up to date on your vaccinations. I know there's some controversy about vac vaccinations, but, you know, I, th I think um, there's a really great movie out and actually a kid, uh, kid, he's, you know, 40. The guy uh, made this movie I went to high school with. It's called Trace Amounts. It talks about the vaccinations. It's not a pr an anti-vaccination uh, movie. It's not a pro-vaccination movie. It just says, look, there's some bad stuff in the vaccinations that the the carrier of the vaccination and maybe we should look at that stuff so that's good good movie it's called trace amounts you guys should check check that out um and uh yeah you know uh if your kid's having some wheezing or uh strider we call some like high-pitched um, um noises when they're breathing uh they got fevers and chills and they're feeling crappy they look terrible take them into the er because if they have epiglottitis it's bad news and they can really die so um once again i was just super thankful for that it was pretty wild um so it was, uh good story all in all um hopefully uh i don't soil any more shorts this week <laughs> talk to you guys later of course i always forget to tell you guys to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these stories um and the information uh pass it along share with your friends find me on the facebook the twitter all that good stuff um, and if you want to ask me questions uh, about your specific situ situation, I'm actually on uh, HealthTap, so you can find a link around here uh, to go to HealthTap and uh, um, ask me uh, anything online. Okay, take care.